The first recommendations on carbohydrate intake were proposed in the 1980s and 1990s by the Committee on Medical Aspects of Food and Nutrition Policy, which has since disbanded and now replaced by the Scientific Advisory Committee on Nutrition. Between then and now, overwhelming evidence is mounted showing carbohydrate consumption to be associated with many of today's current health problems. More specifically though, it's the type of carbohydrate, the simple sugars and refined carbohydrates, which are the most problematic for health. A high intake of these types of carbohydrates is now recognised as a significant risk factor for diabetes, fatty liver disease, dental caries and obesity, making sugar consumption a large focus for current health initiatives and government policy across Britain. In the UK, 57% of adults are overweight and obese, which is predicted to reach around 70% by 2034. Children in the UK are following a similar trend, with 25% of them being overweight and obese. The prevalence of doctor-diagnosed diabetes in adults increased between 1994 and 2014 from 2.9% to 7.1% and 1.9% to 5.3% for men and women respectively. The cost of obesity alone to the NHS is £5.1 billion, but between 2010 and 2011, the cost of treating diabetes and the complications that result from it was a staggering £9.8 billion a year, which is predicted to reach £16.9 billion by 2035-36. However, the NHS has refuted claims about potential bankruptcy in the future, despite such claims circulating in the media. Ironically, actual sugar consumption has fallen over the past 40 years, while consumption of sugar-sweetened beverages and foods have risen. Children ages 4 to 10 are said to consume just over 60 grams of sugar a day, equating to 5,543 sugar cubes or 22 kilograms of sugar in just one year. Sugar consumption is highest among school-age children, but is also highest among low-income families. However, it's important to note high consumption of sugary foods is not justified by a low income when you consider a bag of bananas or apples can be purchased at a lower price which contains natural sugars as well as vitamins and minerals. The biggest source of sugar for kids are juices and soft drinks, although for ages 19 to 64 one of the biggest sources of sugar comes from table sugar. However, this may be attributed to Britain's strange cultural obsession with tea. Health initiatives are currently in place across Britain to reduce sugar intake. Public Health England compiled an evidence-based report called Sugar Consumption, the Evidence for Action, which expresses the need to drastically reduce sugar intake across the population. These recommendations are also supported by the British Dental Association, who report seeing an increase in sugar-related dental problems in both adults and children. Change for Life has issued a new campaign that focuses on educating parents to be sugar smart, and even encourages parents to download the new Sugar Smart app that measures the sugar content of everyday food and drink. Action on Sugar have also proposed an evidence-based six-point sugar reduction plan to David Cameron and are also backing TV chef Jamie Oliver's obesity plan too. Some of the actions proposed by Action on Sugar involved a 50% reduction within the next five years starting with soft drinks ceasing the promotion and all types of marketing of unhealthy food to children and adolescents and a 20% duty on all sugar sweetened soft drinks and confectionery. They also began promoting Sugar Awareness Week between 30th of November and 6th of December. All health initiatives proposed involved the proposal of a sugar tax with 53% of the public being for it. In review of five educational school intervention programs that aim to reduce sugar sweetened beverage consumption and to investigate changes in body mass, three showed long term success. After 12 months, one of which found the percentage of overweight and obese children decreased while the control group increased by 7.5%. Sugar tax doesn't address the root cause or take into context the bigger picture. Research has also suggested calorie intake has dropped but activity levels have dropped further. Evidence investigating marketing strategies such as the 4Ps framework is shown to influence consumption and purchase of sugar. These same principles can be applied to the marketing of healthy foods but need to be marketed with equal if not more vigour than the marketing strategies used to promote unhealthy foods. Overall, the dynamics of sugar consumption and its effects on the health of the population is complex. As such, this surely warrants an equal response and an approach that mirrors its complexity. The food industry needs to become a part of the solution and not part of the problem to shift the favour towards the goals of the initiatives.
whilst the government needs to do its part in enforcing change and aggressively working towards fulfilling the goals of the initiatives. However, reducing sugar consumption is just one step towards tackling a multifaceted problem. There are many other factors affecting the health of the public besides sugar. Significant long-term improvements in public health and reductions in dietary-related diseases will ultimately be accomplished at an individual level without tactics of coercion. This change will come from parents having realistic nutrition and body weight perceptions, better food awareness, practical guidance on calorie balance and portion control, and education on the effects of overnutrition. This, of course, needs to be followed up by parents putting knowledge into practice and implementing long-term positive behaviour changes such as moderating portion sizes or increasing purchases of foods that contain natural sugars such as fruit whilst decreasing or eliminating the purchase of foods that contain free sugars.